I'm uh, Marco Coutinho da Silva. I'm an associate professor at The Ohio State University uh, in the uh, Theogenology Service. I've been there for about eight years now and uh, doing uh, research and providing clinical service in the hospital as well as teaching. There are two different scenarios of dogs that are affected by pyometra. The first one, which is uh, the most common, those are older females that have already a degree of cystic endometrial hyperplasia, which will indeed favors the presence and development of the bacteria within the uterus and then development of pyometra. Then the other scenario, which is the one-year-old, two-year-old female with a very nice, perfect endometrium that also develops pyometra. So pyometra is uh, one of the most devastating diseases for breeders because it's a life-threatening condition. It is a disease difficult to treat with a high rate of reoccurrence. So um, in many cases, the only solution is to spade the batch and, of course, remove this valuable animal from the breeding pool. So we are interested in trying to determine what are the causes for this high rate of recurrence and potentially come up with new modalities for treatment. The most common data is about 25%. And not only the 25% is recurrence, but some of those, you're never able to clear the infection. So even after five, six days of treatment, the uterus is still full of purulent material. So I was fortunate enough to receive an award from the AKC, Canine Health Foundation, for studying pyometra in dogs. We are also fortunate to receive the AKC, CHF, and Theory Knowledge Foundation residency award. So we have a resident that is currently funded by the this uh, consortium, and the resident was heavily involved in this project. So our hypothesis was that E. coli, which is the bacteria that is most commonly isolated from clinical cases, uh, in about 80% of the cases, E. coli is, is the bacteria isolated. So uh, we hypothesized that E. coli was producing biofilm, which is a polysaccharide matrix that makes the bacteria able to evade the immune system and uh, resistant to antibiotics. So uh, we were able to recruit 23 cases of pyometra from veterinary clinics across the country. And out of those, we had 20 different strains of E. coli isolated. And then we were able to do different type of uh, assays. So we used crystal violet, which is an assay that measures the biofilm production in vitro. And then we looked at histopathology, and fish, which is uh, fluorescence in situ hybridization that looks directly at the presence of bacteria and, the, and confirms the type of bacteria, as well as uh, scanning electron microscopy where we direct visualize the bacteria within the endometrium as well as that fibrinous matrix, which is the biofilm. In our samples, out of the 20 strains, 17 strains were able to produce biofilm. And interesting, we had three cases where we had two strains, two different strains growing on the same endometrium, and some of those were producing biofilm and some were not. So it certainly, we demonstrated that indeed they, they produce biofilm. That is likely one of the mechanisms by which the bacteria is able to remain in the uterus even though treatment is performed. So now we are actually submitting another proposal now focusing on further uh, genotyping the bacteria that we isolated and looking at different patterns of bacterial uh, resistance uh, for antibiotics as well as potential treatments for uh, in situ, so basically infusing the uterus with uh, different types of therapies to try to remove that biofilm. I think that one of the approaches that we will certainly look into is the local therapy within the uterus. A lot of times we don't do that approach. We treat them systemically with antibiotics and drugs or ecbolics that will cause contraction of the uterus, but perhaps doing a, a uterine lavage or uterine infusions with uh, uh, some uh, drugs that can disrupt that biofilm may also uh, aid on the uh, evacuation of the fluid from the uterus as well as the bacteria. So um, a lot of this biofilm concept and studies in veterinary medicine now, uh, especially in reproduction, are from studies based on the horses. And in the horses, uh, some type of mucolytics, for example, acetylcysteine or uh, trees, EDTA, those two 
seems to have a, a reasonable effect on not only biofilm uh, removal, but also uh, increase the uh, antibiotic efficacy in, in the uterus. The questions are usually related to the treatment and uh, if there is any new drug and also cost. And uh, first thing I say is that it's going to cost more to treat than to spay. So if the female is not a, a breeding quality, we strongly still advise to, to just go ahead and spay the female. If it is a valuable female, then the first line of treatment is to remove the progesterone, which is most of those cases progesterone is it's high, it's a diastrous type of disease. So to contract the uterus, so help with evacuation, and then, then antibiotic therapy, broad spectrum antibiotics, a prolonged periods of time. So you can use amoxicillin, clavamox. Usually those are have good penetration in the uterus and their broad spectrum. One difficulty with treating pyometra is the fact that pyometra can be an open cervix or a closed cervix. So for the open cervix, that's the treatment that we usually go for. Closed cervix pyometras are a lot more challenging because you need to first make sure that that cervix opens up. And for that, sometimes applying prostaglandin E topically on the cervix. Misoprostol is one of the drugs that we use. Uh, can help that in um, using some dopamine agonists also can be beneficial. And if you can get a license for using uh, alizine, which is a progesterone uh, inhibitor, so that's the treatment of choice. Unfortunately, you do need to get a special license from the USDA, but once you get this license, you can import the product and use it on your clients. So, and that's certainly a great drug because that will directly inhibit the effect of progesterone, makes that cervix relax, and then you can start treating with prostaglandins and so forth. So the progesterone keeps that cervix closed and the uterus is much less likely to contract. Uh, so by removing those effects and, and adding an anabolic, so you can have a much better response. Yeah, the strategy is keep her pregnant every cycle. So. In fact, uh, our clients are advised that they should breed the female and try to get her pregnant every cycle. And then once they have the litters, then spay immediately. Or if for some reason we had a case, for example, recently where the female was only about a year old and she had not passed out her health clearances. So the client uh, said, I'm not going to breed her until she's over two years old. So then in this case is we treat the female with mebolarone, which is an androgen that prevents them from cycling. So she can stay on that drug. It's a very safe drug. They can stay on for, for a couple of years without any issues. And then when it's time to breed, you stop that medication and the female will come back and start cycling normally. Mebolarone is quite safe in monitoring, you know, liver enzymes and, and kidney enzymes every six months just to make sure that the drug is not being toxic for the animal. But other than that, you know, the only other side effect is uh, some females will have minor clitoral enlargement because it's an androgen, but no behavior changes or anything. Fortunately, that we got some good results, but this was a kind of preliminary experiment. Now we're going to move on to the second phase, which is going to be more directly related to the daily practice, which is trying to treat that and see if the treatments that we we're going to suggest are going to be effective in removing the biofilm. Mm -hmm. And that's this week's VetVine Specialty Update from St. Louis.